that, that would be a, a reproducing or possibly producing structure at L1. I mean, that would be, that's the only reason for distinguishing L1. It's, the distinction of the arbitrary is that. But in your example, which I like very much, uh, that uh, stratification would be uh, usefully introduced uh, for, for expositor purposes. Mm -hmm. And uh, that also helps to explicate what I mean here by useful for expository purposes. You'd be the first to agree, I'm sure, that indeed you're looking at a, a sort of meta language uh, in which the object language is, in fact, the, the machine's operation rules. Uh, and the semantics, if you like, is the machine, and the pragmatics is my desire to write a program on it, if I can, uh, and to, to so-called execute it. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah, no, on this existence operator, though, you were going to... Well, that is the existence operator. Oh. Oh. It exists somewhere. And this is put very beautifully, like yeah. the Glanville, incidentally. I mean, Ralph Glanville really puts it in... His thesis is a masterpiece, and uh, some of his papers on memories are masterpieces, uh, really, clarity. And that's uh, also, in terms of natural language, talking of natural language, uh, does a great, makes a great contribution, I believe, in that book. And um, it's uh, along a different line. <coughs> there is some degree of overlap, and perhaps not adequately documented, but in the later work, Parallelly, but it is very well done, and uh, as far as anybody's to blame for that, I am, because I, I had to make her get the thesis out. <laughs> and uh, see, she was going through an enormous um, kind of glossary of reference notes and so on, actually, about this and with the references, mm -hmm. which, as you're quite right, is necessary to fully acknowledge mm -hmm. those who have participated in, in the work. And I'm afraid I had to say, after the, I'm sorry, at some stage you have to finish your thesis and uh, have it examined. I don't need to particularly listen to a problem of your work on it. Um, the, um, now, I have put down here uh, conversation theory, there's a header on this in medium, conversation theory with a particular language L. Is that legible to you? Yes. Yeah. And I put down here, all uh, in regard to the in medium of L, uh, in L medium, rather, all L are by hypothesis, by hypothesis, my hypothesis. Now, I may be mistaken, it's a hypothesis, by hypothesis, generable from L sub P, which is the thing I call a proto language up here. Okay? Now, hard valued events. I think now said enough initially about concepts, we'll take that notion of a concept, alias stable concept, as being a very crude exposition of something. And that, and, uh, I now go and make it decrudify it later, and perhaps more conveniently, by referring to the condition I, I, I mean by um, um, A shared understanding. I'm not quite sure that it's all there. Have a look on the page before. I think this is a bit better one. Yes, here's a bit better one. What I mean by a shared understanding is that. A shared understanding of T. Uh, and uh, I think that diagram is self-explanatory, but in fact we have to refer to, I'm going to put it in here, refer to purple. to purple sheet, meaning the sheet had just done, okay? Mm -hmm. And this comment will apply in various places. Mm -hmm. uh, I've given the word mem and the word con uh, to concepts and things of type con, which are cons that act on cons and the products of cons. Uh, I have given the name of a description or behavior as T, T A and T B. Uh, it requires the exposition that the indices A and B are used to designate uh, what I call participants and can define as, quite strictly, as P individuals. 
together. There may be several in any one brain. There may be distributed over many brains by in the medium of language. Or they may be identified in one brain, may exist in the minimal case in one brain, in which case you talk about it in the case where one or more of them are enclosed within one particular brain, you talk about a person in the ordinary sense of the word, meaning your I, with our body and corpus and so on. <coughs> Very important, no, no, actually, you can have many personae and uh, so on. This habit does not depict many personae, it depicts a sort of minimal situation right. in which um, T, whatever that is, uh, there exists a concept of T in A which is different to a concept of T in B. Uh, so it, it, this, this character uh, reproduces uh, the procedures which as later go into con A T in order to produce on execution TA, a description or behavior, uh, by means of, uh, from uh, um, con AQ and con AT, P and Q, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, likewise, this, this character is P and this brain or person, whatever the case may be, and it doesn't so much matter, and I've just labeled alpha. Uh, the <coughs> produces uh, by using mem b produces con b t from what I've called here con b r and con b s. They're different conceptions, the same concept. This is a, a symmetrical case of sharing. It may be the case that there is nothing at one stage here. In other words, de novo. Uh, concept may be transferred, but it's somewhat easier to think of concepts that exist already, so something in common yeah. may be extended, and consider where. how they're modified. There's nothing, it may be possible, there's nothing where, in memory? No, no, there can't be nothing in memory, because mem is just a term, uh, and I'll say why the can't, if you don't mind, later, that's why I have to come to a rather more rigorous count of this. Uh, but, uh, to get a closure, informational closure, and, uh, sorry, uh, organizational closure and informational openness condition called P individuation out of it. And that is rather crucial to being able to identify in some way uh, the participants, which may either be internal to a brain or in different brains, whatever. Maybe not even in brains at all, but some kind of fabric which is dynamic, kinetic and not constrained in such a way as to prohibit uh, the existence of these critters. Uh, what in fact, one way of talking about this is to say uh, that these guys can make behaviors or descriptions. Uh, they can also make models like uh, generate these behaviors or descriptions. Mod A, mod B of T A. So I know that is T A. When you say that the models generate, you mean that the models help the. The models could be logo programs or something of this kind, a couple of logo machines. And here I insist there are a couple of logo machines, they're independent. And they make programs, those of which cause the total use what they agree to call stellate figures. So these are the programs in the different logo machines, or the different pieces of a modeling facility of the kind of shown and Darcy and uh, books and whatnot. Uh, <coughs> these are the stellate figures, which are representative of the behavior descriptions possible. These are the external explanations in terms of particular exemplars of programs of what A and B think still eight figures are, and T star is a thing where it matches. Okay? Uh, the unqualified T star, which is a thing that exists public, part of a public concept. And I'm going to put down here, of course, in this case, mod star T. Okay? Mm -hmm. Which are the pair of things that existed in the language the execution of mod star t uh, gives rise to t star now equally well uh, 
instead of making novels literally, people could have asked how questions and received replies, and they could have engaged in descriptions or accounts of one sort or another, and they could have compared them. And if, if asked why that example was used rather than another, they would be answer, answering why questions, reply, which is normally done through the medium of an entailment mesh, it can be done just by using L. This thing is L up here. This is L, all this is L. Uh, conversational language uh, be done equally well by, by, you know, just interview techniques or something. But I mean, the, the dynamics would be the same. And what I mean by a shared understanding is this, that indeed, we could notate the shorthand that initially, uh, A makes con A of T and executes to form T A. He makes it from uh, con A of B and con A of Q. So this lady, B, uh, manufactures con B of T, which in general is a different concept, con B of T, where it's called uh, from con B of uh, R and can be of S, uh, and R and S complex of pair or, or indeed from their own themselves, their own components. Uh, at the end of an agreement, if it occurs, you know, it didn't occur because there may be an agreement to disagree, uh, and that's perfectly all right too, but there may be nothing, right? If the agreement occurs, what is happening is, is that after the event, whatever that means, now all I'm prepared to assert here is an order, and what kind of order I'm very particularly not saying. So I think that deserves separate attention. It does indeed, your list gets separate attention. You know, it's all to do with, with Ashby and, and Ron Atkin. Ashby's specification of the machine, which is such that it prohibits machines from doing this, simulated, not a computing machine. And uh, Ron Atkin, so far as he said, we can make other machines very easily, uh, to work computing machines, he counted differently and couldn't do it. So, I mean, uh, it, it, we need really to consider what after means in terms of an agreement, or a coherency as it may be modeled. Coherence is simply a model of agreement in this broad sense, including agreeing to disagree as well. And maybe it affects the procedural extension of Russia's logical coherence. Um, so now what's happening here as the agreement takes place? What's happening is that after the event, uh, a is in a position to construct as before, con A of T as before from P, con A of P and P, con uh, A of Q and Q, but also to construct it from R dash A and con R dash A, from con R dash A, and S A, and those things this guy does. And that is added to the repertoire to enlarge the concept. With and, and to enlarge, in fact, the application of the concept, either externally or internally. Uh, by uh, by 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 reason of the interaction, which is after all an interactionist theory, uh, which is observable, and is the minimal observable, is the minimal hard valued event. Was, uh, was the easiest one to deal with, in fact, uh, most explicitly. And, uh, but does not in the process in any way uh, demolish the structure. Uh, uh, sir? May I ask you a couple of questions? You may indeed. Ask anything, please. Just carry on. I mean, uh, just well, well, whole idea. just to see if some of the things you've said are registering with me. Mm -hmm. 
the observer in this situation must be there, but it could be in one of the P individuals or both of the P individuals. It could be, it outside. wouldn't be in the same P individual, but not in another P individual in the same brain, like right, probably right. in the same person. Right. Okay. So right. that, for example, the trained subject in the Wittberg experiments or in the earlier experiment, the ACH experiment, etc., and many other right. experiments were had little uh, observers carefully cultivated to right. observe what they were doing. Right. The Piagetian interviewer is acting as a participant in a conversation with the youngster over some breaks or, 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 or volumes of fluid or whatever it may be actually, or as in Luria's or Vygotsky's experiment, similarly, uh, Luria's uh, thought and language, or uh, I'm sorry, Vygotsky's thought and language, or Luria's experiments, and I did note that delightful pamphlet earlier by Piaget on, on the subject. Uh, and um, the um, it is perfectly true. It's also true that there might be another person uh, outside looking at the Piagetian interviewer to make sure that that the, the, the proper mode of inquiry and trying to extend my why questions and so on goes on. Or they might be just a couple of people chatting, say, you guys are chatting, I'm looking at you, or we guys are chatting, and you're looking at us or something. Uh, it's again, it's possible. But as a minimal case, we can we in, in a in a the, the achievement of an agreement in a conversation. Yeah. There would be, as well as the two P individuals who are participants, related to those two P individuals, two other P individuals who are observing one Why? from each perspective. Uh, no, no, as no. a needn't be. No, that is the event that's observed. And I would agree that it implies uh, the, the Glendale, for example, is that, that if that event occurs, if that event is an object. The, the existence of that object, that shared set of mm -hmm. understandings, those mm -hmm. transitive P's, Q's, R's, and S's, is the, is the fact of that hard valued event. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's, no, the, that's the validation function right I'm just there. wondering about whether, in principle, there must be an observer of the event. Uh, as a matter of fact, I do, but I won't add that at the moment to the theory. I think there must, in fact, in principle, be an observer. And the observer may be absent or, or unconnected. Or may I put it in this way, that the event is observable. Yes. Uh, that's all. I mean, it is observable. I just wondered is, what, I mean, how far uh, that, that? Uh, I'll go that far, but no further, I think. I mean, I agree that in order to call that a vandal object... If the observer were present, that's what the observer yes. would observe. Yes. yes. Okay. Now, one other set of questions, or one other question, is... In the production of uh, con A, mm -hmm. T, and con B, T, from the various uh, other concepts which contribute to that in each individual, Q, P, and R, S, and yeah. are, you, are you willing to, to say that it's entirely possible that while Q and P and R and S initially are distinct, mm -hmm. that they might not be substantially different when dealing again with the ambiguity? Of course they are. They might essentially be. be the same, or, or different in... It doesn't matter. Know, it doesn't matter. I don't know any limits to things that can be thought of and seen. The only thing I, I think I will uh, insist upon, actually, is that it goes along with any cognition an effective or kinetic component. Well, what I'm asking is that in a, in a sort of a null case, might, they, might Q and P be equivalent to R and S? Well, they could be, but it would be less easy to demonstrate. That's very simple. Yes. <coughs> In which case, we would have almost identical things. If for all concepts uh, we have this sort of strict equivalent, in fact, uh, then you, we are doppelgangers. Right. I'm just. <laughs> I mean, that's I'm all. I mean, it's, uh, you know. But in order, if that were true for everything in our repertoires, every persona, we called ourselves, 
that uh, was self-referred to, self-referentially by the thing that's chatting about, self-referential logics, whatever, Gunther logics and so on, self and other referential logics, uh, uh, the, um, well, you know, we, we'd be doppelgangers, we wouldn't, we wouldn't need to talk. This, right. is the, this is the alarming thing, actually, that you can conceive a world, and I do, in limits of togetherness, and also to some extent in microman, which I'm certainly be grateful to look at some mistake. Uh, I think I'd make this point, but struggling with the real danger of uh, the world ossifying into a doppelganger world, because if men were not productive as well as reproductive, this would happen. And uh, that's un unlamentably, therefore, we'd all be the same, and there'd be no need to conserve information transfer. So it is. So there'd be no necessity in so doing. We would not really talk. We would just exchange signals, literally, and it would be crystalline work. So if the, so the, the case I'm thinking of eliminates the nature of conversation. Right. Yeah, and I believe that that case is prohibited by a certain rule, modification rule. But, uh, I'd like to go into that a little later, if you don't mind. Uh, because and it certainly is a possibility. Now, I believe that possibility, though approach, would lead to a catastrophic event. A catastrophic event, or, or bifurcation. I mean, that in the sort of formal sense. But it's precisely <coughs> the possibility that's encouraged by a lot of the machinery that's been designed under the name of education. Uh, I'm afraid it is. Okay. But... Um, I'm afraid, I'm also hopeful that indeed the machinery is so badly designed, it won't work. And um, this is, um, <laughs> the, uh, I mean, I'm not again education, but I'm again that design of education. Um, now, what have I done on the next page? I, well, this is explicit, the, likewise symmetrically, B acquires the ability without demolishing the ability to construct uh, con B T from mem B uh, R and mem B S and S B and S R uh, uh, sorry B R R B damn <laughs> they call it polit polit um, and uh, achieves the ability to um, Represent, um, represent a symmetrical case, so we know that an event has occurred involving both, and that event is observable, it's an appropriate interface, which might, as I say, be an ordinary conversation, or it might be a conversation in mind, or it might use one of these fancy displays that we're currently looking at in the Elsevier books, which are equipments designed for this purpose, and which rather arbitrarily separate this out as I'm going to put it in inverted commas. The L1. On L. And I would separate this out as the L0. I'm putting it in inverted commas deliberately. Of L. That's the only convenience of having in those machinery a thing called a modeling facility which is a device for making models of rather more tangible, realistic kind, and you can make by typing in symbols, I mean, they're actual plugs and sockets and things of this kind, and having a pair of them, and having an entailment mesh up here, or an entailment structure, in fact, is the beauty of the pruning sort of mesh, it, it's just to make this separation of convenience, but I, I, I am insisting that, that indeed you, they're all really unstratified, There's no, there is no such thing. So I've put in inverted commas, and I would like those inverted commas, please, to be respected. That although it is convenient very often to use such um, stratifications for purposes of exposition or whatever, it is not uh, at all the case that they're necessary. Uh, we're just separating explanations of a type which gives a program or a model and explanations of a type that. Uh, answer a question of how you made that particular program and uh, the execution of the program. I mean, these are all really in a uniform 
song, is that machine still going? I, I, I thought I'm terribly nervous about it ever since we lost a bit. I'm sorry, it's so obsessive, but it seems a shame. And <laughs> um, now I just show another case here, which is only to point out that you can have A and B in the same box, in the same brain or something, and you can have an interface here. Okay. And, of course, you can draw this kind of picture any darned way you like. And some of the darned ways of drawing this picture, this one uses um, red to designate brains, and uses black, as I hope black, uh, to designate L sub P. L -A of L sub P, specializations of L sub P, uh, and uh, then you've got uh, these entities, which I call P individuals, and we justify later, and I've shown some of the possible arrangements that can exist. I mean, for example, there can be P individuals, or organizations that close information in the open systems, which contain several uh, there could be one which doesn't overlap with any other. That case is not impossible, hence I will, I will, I will draw it to it, if I may. But the implication of this is it not that one P individual cannot exist? Uh, you can have a brain, and one, one P individual can't exist in two. Right. There must always be at least two P individuals for any one to in exist. In normal case. But and that's not a Venn diagram, that's a coherence diagram like the things in Microman are, I hope explicitly enough so. Uh, they are uh, coherence diagrams. They look like Venn diagrams, the same notation, but they're not talking about sets with an intersection or that is a union. They're talking about the overlap by coherence. Well, I don't understand your question. What I'm saying is you have, you have brains, and then you have Things called brains, you know, things called language, or, or something called language. But the P individual is a product of interaction. Well, actually, as we define it later, it's, it is a product of interaction. So you so see, we would define the P individual. You could define a P individual. You could define a P individual as yeah. something like this, but with a couple of open arrows. Hermit. Uh, this is a curious kind of creature that would exist if everybody was a doppelganger, sort of super hermit. Uh, and these amount not really to conversations, but signals, the degenerate conversation. Now, we addressed the question of in what this rather crucial operation X Consisted and notice. I, I mean, I just want to note some of these. This is sort of corporate organisation. Something that can only be done by bits of P individuals, which are accommodated in at least several brains. Now, this is a, a couple of P individuals interacting, independent of P individuals interacting. This is the unit case here of the sort of monad. Okay. Uh, and um, when I when I talked about uh, I talked about execution order, as I'm going to do in some length on the next page, get to it. Uh, I'd like just to give uh, some comments about execution order by illustrating uh, how, in fact, Ashby, when he's talking about machines, is talking about a one simplex in which uh, the these things are instants. The dots. Yeah. And these things are intervals, and they need to be the same. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and this can kind of be interpreted as implication causality of time. Implication causality of time. Now, it makes an iota of difference if I have a parallel organization. Well, makes an iota of practical difference, the efficiency, but then an iota of logical, typological difference. If I have uh, a lot of these going on at once, so that various bits of engine which are independent are running simultaneously, 
Providing they have interrupts, which amount to putting a cross in that line, arrow down there, these are the different clocks, different clocks in the individual bits. Uh, say, I call it clock one, clock two, okay? Uh, 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 and uh, I then, in fact, get a parallel, which is parallel of both of these things, and this is a serial. Draw it out. Serial thing. Now, uh, the next uh, simple complex which comes up is uh, the can be represented as a relation <coughs> in terms of uh, adjacent faces. And that's a two simplex, or a two simple complex. And I can count over the edges of that this way, or around the edges, or any way. And that's a more elaborate kind of counting. This is an attempt to depict a four simplex in which relativity theory, for example, is placed. Or the general case, which we call of Clifford's N simplices, which uh, have singularities built into them and bifurcations built into them, which is very convenient, which in fact, with which, in fact, uh, Kingdom Clifford pre-invented, uh, without completing it, um, a form of relativity theory which is capable of applying not only to, to physics and cosmology, uh, but also to a vast number of other phenomena, such as social phenomena, which typically have event sizes, event dimensions, if you like, which are very, very large. And this very large can be represented by the dimensionality of such figures. Uh, across which flow occurs in a relational structure. Uh, now, another way of going to the same thing, of saying the same thing in mechanical terms, rather than in terms of topology, would be to say, well, I can, of course, have a, a serial machine, a Turing machine, let's call this a FSM, and all of these are FSMs, incidentally. A uh, Turing machine will be, as Minsky um, have it, and people so nice to point out, Minsk actually consists of a type storage and an FSM acting on the type. And that is infinite, it's a line. It's a linear, one simplex, and it may be indexed in very fancy ways, but essentially a Turing machine is a finite state machine such that it can operate on the whatever is written on and we can write on uh, the infinite tape. And the finite state machine has to be large enough, actually, to contain the initial program, the right program. And the self-reproducing Turing machine, a von Neumann type self-reproducing Turing machine, is that together with a punctuator, uh, operating upon, however, a fixed stack. Now, this picture, which has Roused a good deal of contention, and I apologized actually to Jeffrey for it because it, it's easily misinterpreted, and I thought it was going to be useful. I'm not sure if it is or not. Consists in an FSM, which, like a Turing machine, is operating upon a whole lot of stacks. But they're not stacks of push down stacks of words, and they differ from, or bite, or whatever you down or anything, which remain, as it were, only the top one is accessible and are inactive when in the, in the stack, which is simply a push down pop up device, you know, many as you like. Okay? Uh, but the idea here is that when something is popped up, it's addressed by this, let's call it initializer, uh, it remains active. <clears throat> and it can maintain links all over the place to other active things, in which case immediately occurs these are FSMs, 
these are FSM, these are FSM, but there's no need to have a reserved initializer. From London, unfortunately. I won't be managed to. Can you? Hello, coming. Since Ron has heard some of this before, mm -hmm. let's see whether. See, there's some points in this discussion that I want very much to come clarify because I'm not totally certain where the distinctions go. So let me just say some things while Gordon is out and you can correct me. Why is the, uh, what the, the, where, where we're going here? About this. Yes, yeah, so where we're going here is 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 in fact something like this where you have a pile, some collection of finite state machines, all sort of mutually operating, uh, not in the sense of mutually operating as parallel clock thing. So there's having two sitting along, operating, and occasionally interrupting each other and talking. Mm -hmm. Gordon would argue is not really very much different than having one, except that it's faster mm -hmm. or more efficient. Uh, what he wants to argue is that, in fact, if you have... If the, intera if the interact lost perfect transmission of everything that, of everything that, uh, that ha is, is exclusive to any one of those machines, Yes. Now, Gordon, Gordon wants to argue that just as uh, that sort of thing is still really a, a one simplex, it really just is a, a faster way of doing it. Obviously, I could make something that was a single processor do this yes. simply by picking some time interval shorter than any of these and having it go and do this operation and then do that one, then do this one, then do that one, then do this one. So a single finite state machine, this is really just equivalent to a single finite state machine. And I, although I have occasionally talked to topologists about simplices, which have to do with, uh, in a certain sense, uh, uh, calling them the two simplex just means, in, in the sense that I have to draw it in two dimensions, and yeah. you know, that trivial notion of it. I mean, that the surfaces, the basic energy that way. I, I don't quite, he wants to argue that an organization like this, or I think he will argue that an organization like that is fundamentally different than however many of those that you've got going. Uh, and that the difference is rather like the distinction between one simplex, one simplex and higher kinds of simplices. And somewhere along in there, my topology weakens, and I'm not quite sure I understand the difference. And it's in this sense that he wants to say that, for example, brains aren't finite state machines because he wants to argue that that thing, that a stack of finite state machines all mutually fiddling with each other, okay, is just not the other structure. Okay. Uh, he, I would again argue that is very much the same, that there's a certain sense in which it is, in the following sense, that you could take a single finite state machine and simulate the operation of that, okay? Because I obviously, if it, no, no matter how many of them you've got, I suppose you have a finite number of them, I just make a finite state machine that whacks time up into I have to agree with you. billions of them. Now, Gordon makes a distinction, and this is something I think we ought to, with having several people argue about, that the fact that you can simulate a behavior doesn't mean you're doing it. And that's a, I agree with that point when it's stated that way. For example, if you make a machine that beats me at chess and beats everyone at chess, I do not, I mean, Minsky might argue that you now understand chess. I mean, the whole point when Marvin would talk about why do AI was that when we learn how to make machines smart, we will have understood how people think. I mean, he says, has said that repeatedly, but he would still say that. But he would say that if you do that. And I would agree that just because you've simulated the behavior doesn't mean you have done the behavior. So um, well, that's where we're going here. I like to. Now, is that machine still to, running, you think? Yes, well, I wanted to keep track while you were gone. I, I just sort of gave um, um, my estimate of the direction which we were oh, going really. to sort of prepare yeah. because it, I think this is a, um, is a crucial point to discuss here. Yeah, especially. okay. Well, I'm, I'm just waiting for Paul to be chatting. Bobby and I required to talk to Bobby myself. Okay, well then perhaps we can continue here. I've asked him to 
and tell me when he's finished. Okay. So. And um, mm -hmm. I was chatting about programs or something, and I um, I will just wait for the finishment. Yeah, in this case, I mean, I think you probably put the points that are needed, namely that these darn things can get linked together, there's no need for an initializer. They all have different clocks, that is presupposed, each FSM has a different clock. And their interactions give rise to stable configuration. In other words, there are, by virtue of those interactions, certain stable configurations in the system. That's the essential element. Oh, it's a, it's a population paradigm, which is now becoming quite, quite uh, reasonable in, in artificial intelligence. And it's underdone, because only puts a flags or Dirkstra flagging systems or some other similar device into the arrangement. And they write languages like so-called concurrent Pascal, which is not concurrent, it, it's parallel Pascal. But going to the, the critical element, it seems to me, given what, what you were just saying, <laughs> left out is responsible for. Right, but it's interesting, the, the one piece of language that you left out in describing what he's thinking about, which I think is a critical distinction, is that they have stable configurations. We're talking about things like eigenvalues. Yes, we are talking about exactly about the and eigenvalues that without and that, eigen Without that being brought in, then this collection of, of, of many machines doesn't doesn't look very different from splitting the serial machine. This is why we have the complementarity principle. Eigenvalues into it, you're talking about a very different kind of system yeah. from these something yeah. that you could build by just adding up. Right, no, 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 no. The question is, it, the, I think that. Easy. Eigenvalues of that, easy. Eigenvalues of that. But you can generalize. The question is not merely adding the assertion that if you have a number of interacting things uh, uh, coupled freely, uh, as to say, not in a restricted manner, it's quite often if you do that that the thing melts or it doesn't. If it doesn't yeah. melt, you can say that it's come into some sort of stable state. Yeah. Uh, the question, it, the, the fact that that's true is still true whether or not you cannot simulate it by a single finite state machine. I can simulate an eigenvalue problem, many sorts of eigenvalue problems. I, what I was saying, Gordon, was that you wanted to make the point that this sort of system of a collection of mutually interacting such machines, uh, which comes to, let's add that at this point, some sort of stable, mm -hmm. mutually interacting yeah. uh, blob, is different than a fine, than a single finite state. Oh, absolutely, it can't be. It can't and be. different in the sense, in the same way that one simplices are different than multiple dimensional simplices. Yeah. I also asserted that you would agree that the behavior of such a thing, or the activity of such a thing, might be simulated yeah. by a finite oh, state. Oh, it can be simulated. By a finite state machine. Yeah. So, can't in other words, it, it is not different, and, and I distinguished that, and now let's make sure that, that we, that you and I are in agreement in mm -hmm. this, that you, that here is something whose behavior is still simulatable. But the difference is that if you simulate it in a finite state machine, it's not reproducing itself. The difference is you don't have any information transfer. It isn't doing it. Really. No, it isn't doing anything. It's really it's simulating. Not it's simulating. It's, not it's doing up the simulation, okay. which is mapped on. But, but in fact, it, it's not as if this thing is some magical entity. Mm. Uh, in that, if we want to build something that behaves the same way as that, we can build it on our apple, but perhaps not with the amount of core one has. Uh, but in other words, it's not something that is different. It is the same sense that if I want to talk about a two simplex, I can build a two simplex out of one simplices. Obviously, you've just done it. There are yeah. a variety of edges yeah. which define it in a certain sense. However, yeah. it is a collection of one simplices is only by declaration the same as a two simplex. I could say yeah. Yeah. that it's the same. So there, there, there is a real distinction here between something that... Uh, simulates a behavior and something that does a behavior. Now, Gordon wants to make that point clear, and as I mentioned while you're at it, I quite agree with you that if Marvin Minsky makes a machine that beats me in chess, I mean, Marvin has often asserted in my presence, yeah. or not directly to me, but to crowds assembled around him, that the point of doing AI is that if you make a machine that's artificial intelligence in some suitable way, you have understood something about natural intelligence. Well, I, I agree with Marvin in saying that if you have intelligence, there's nothing artificial about it. You don't realize it's hardware. 
On the other hand, you can only simulate that thing on a one simplex machine. Well, but yes, but the point also is that, 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 that you may not know that what you have, depending on how intelligence is defi uh, defined. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, in particular, you, if, if you make a machine that beats everyone in chess, you haven't understood chess. I mean, that's a very clean example because it's quite clear that uh, you probably can imagine making a machine that beats you by brute force, although the, the efforts so far uh, aren't that successful. But, su but supposing you teach me an algorithmic system that is equivalent to what the machine is doing, and I don't know anything about chess, but I'm able to beat you. Uh, no, look. No, no, but the question is, 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 is no, there's a difference here that, that we're trying to make is that merely because you simulate a behavior, and when we get to complicated systems, it's going to be very hard. Well, what's the behavior? It's behavior, for example, winning in chess? Yeah, yes. That's, no, 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 but that's or the same.